with PySignage, you can use MP3 audio files or audio streams as assets. This lets you add a background audio to accompany your display and make your display more engaging. You can combine these audio assets in background with any type of asset. Even if you are running a video asset on screen which has its own audio, if needed, you can mute the audio of that video asset and use the standalone audio asset for background. Note that audio assets are just like any other assets, that is files and they can be used anywhere. We are emphasizing on audio in background as it is the primary and the most popular use case or application with PySignage. Now let's directly jump to creating display having audio assets running in background. There are two ways to achieve this. First way is to add audio asset directly as part of a regular playlist. This type of usage has some limitations but good enough for simple implementation. The second way is to create a separate audio playlist with audio assets only and schedule it together with the regular playlist. This way gives you a greater control over your background audio. Now let us explore the first method where we add audio asset to be played in background directly in a regular playlist. We have already seen in previous videos how to create a playlist. We will skip that here. We will select a playlist already present. You can see this playlist has some assets. Now we have to add audio track in this playlist to be played in background. I will search for mp3 files. You can see I have some audio assets uploaded in the account out of which I will select one. Make sure the play in background option is checked. Once done, deploy the playlist and your display with background music is ready. The important limitation here is that you can add only one audio asset, may it be file or streaming link as part of a regular playlist. Having multiple audio assets in a regular playlist will not throw any error. But the playing and the manner of transition between multiple audio tracks will be unpredictable. So if you are using a mp3 asset, you will be limited to that single track for the whole playlist running time. But if you use an audio stream link as an asset, you will not face such limitation. Secondly, if you have a video asset having its own audio track, it will run by default and the audio asset you have in background will stop. If you want your background audio track to play uninterrupted, make sure you use the mute audio option for your video assets when they are part of your playlist. Also, keep the audio asset at the top of the playlist to make sure it will start playing in the background the moment playlist is deployed. If it is in middle somewhere, it will only start playing based on its position in the playlist. Nonetheless, once it starts running, the audio background play will be continuous without interruption for the entire screen runtime. The above step is just to prevent delay initially. So, this method is ideal when you are creating a very simple use case where you need a single audio asset to be played in background of a running display. Now, what if you need one audio asset associated with one display asset, that is, every visual display asset should have its own separate background audio. This can be done by using multi-zone layout feature of PySignage. You choose a two-zone layout, add the display asset in the main zone and audio asset for background in the side zone. When the main zone transitions to next asset, the audio attached to the respective main zone also starts. So let us see the demo. I have selected a playlist which was created in layout 2A. You can create a new one from scratch. Select the asset for the main zone and attach audio asset for the side zone. Note that there is no play in background option in side zone. Audio files are just regular assets here. Once selection is done, the playlist is ready to be deployed with each main zone asset accompanied by a unique background audio. But this implementation poses a small inconvenience. As you are using the side zone to attach the audio asset, the side zone part of the screen will be blank as seen in our layout to a implementation. To solve this, we have to use the show full screen option for main zone asset while creating the playlist. The audio asset attached to the side zone will play in the background while the main zone asset will occupy the full screen. While using this option, Two important things to note. If you have video asset in main zone, along with show full screen option, also use the mute audio option for the video. If this is not done, the sound in video will play instead of attached side zone audio. Secondly, in case of image and video assets in main zone, even after using show full screen option, the assets may not occupy the full screen, leaving some blank space. This happens because the moment you select show full screen option, the setup behaves like layout 1 having single zone 
instead of 2 zone layout 2a. So while creating the playlist using image and video assets in main zone, make sure their dimensions are same as the recommended dimensions for layout 1 that is 1920 into 1080 pixels even though the playlist is being created in layout 2a. When this is done, on using show full screen option, the image or video asset will occupy the full screen. The other way to implement the same use case is through using custom layouts. Create a custom multi-zone layout and make the zone having audio asset of negligible dimension as to leave no visible blank screen space. Link to the video on how to create custom layouts is given in the description below. What we have done till now is add background audio directly in a regular playlist and we have seen its two variations that is using single audio asset run in background throughout the entire playlist or having each display asset in a playlist having its own designated background audio. Now let us explore the other way as mentioned at the beginning of the video that is to create a separate audio playlist and schedule it along with the regular playlist. As said above, this method gives you greater control. For this, first let us create a new audio playlist. Like all the different playlists we have seen previously, the audio playlists are nothing but regular playlists with some additional settings and controls. So the initial procedure of creating an audio playlist remains the same. Go to playlist tab. Type a name for your playlist. I will enter audio PL here and click on add. Let us keep the default layout one. Now select all the audio files you want to be part of this playlist. Here I will search for mp3 files. I have uploaded three, we'll select them all. If you are using a streaming link, choose only one link. As we are creating an audio playlist here, the plain background option is made redundant by the next steps we follow, where we modify some settings to convert the present regular playlist into an audio playlist. So you can leave it as it is. Checking it or unchecking it does not make a difference. Also in case of audio playlists, we cannot limit the runtime of audio assets. Each audio track will completely run. The next audio track in the queue starts playing once the previous track completes its run. Now once you have selected all the assets you need for the audio playlist, go to settings at the top right. A pop-up page opens. Here you can see the option, play this as independent audio playlist for the aux port. Select it. You can see the volume control. Set it appropriately. You can change this even later according to your need. Also, you can check the box to make your mp3 files play in shuffle mode. Note that if you save the setting as it is and schedule this playlist in combination with the regular playlist, the audio track output will be limited to aux port of the Pi player. But if you want the same audio track to be heard via the screen speaker also, select the option output audio in HDMI port. Now if you save this playlist and schedule it, the audio output will happen via screen speakers along with player aux port output. Notice that there is a label audio seen in the settings button of your audio playlist. Now schedule this playlist additionally along with your regular playlist and your display with custom background audio is ready. We have seen scheduling additional playlists in previous video. All the scheduling features and options applicable for regular playlist are applicable here. Link to the video explaining scheduling is given in the description below. Remember that if you use output audio in HDMI port also option while creating audio playlist, make sure you use mute audio option if you have any video content in your regular playlist that is display playlist. If you do not mute the regular playlist videos, both the video with its sound and the audio playlist track will be playing simultaneously. Now we have seen multiple ways of adding separate audio tracks in background of a PySynate display. Feel free to reach us at info at for any further queries.